Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Drew Samuel Subs here. Today, this is going to be episode number 3 of Behind the Wall. I know it's been a while, but we're going to be discussing Daytona, previewing Daytona for the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series, previewing it, talking about it while playing it in NASCAR Heat 4 for the Xbox One. So, I do have my face cam back, there it is, and then face cam, there's the regular camera. So, I'll set the face cam up. And then, uh, then we'll get rock and rollin' talking about Daytona, and, uh, yeah, I'll probably do like a 13% race, the night race, and it'll be the last race of the regular season. There we go. Alright, face cam's ready, regular cam's ready, I'm ready, I hope y'all are. And uh, what would really make y'all ready is if y'all would leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot. I really need y'all to do that so I can keep cranking out awesome videos like this. Also, please share the video, share my channel, and go check out our website, subscribeseries.com. Also, leave a comment down below about which 25% race you want me to do next in NASCAR Heat 4. But like I said, today we're playing the game, but the main thing we're doing is previewing Daytona. And I'm really excited, so... Uh, let's, let's get into it. I'm going to be doing a quick race, but, uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Who's our driver? Bubba! Okay, I can live with that. I like Bubba. Let's do it, though. We'll buy technologies thing. I know let's, uh, quick race settings. 4, 6, 10. No, no, no. 13. Set. Let's go to Daytona, let's discuss Daytona, and the first thing I want to talk about is, crap, we're doing the Daytona 500, I'm going to get out of this because I don't want to do, I want to do the night race, my bad, but uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the experience series, it's not their, <clears throat> it is not their uh, season finale, the regular season finale, uh, I think they have one more race, I think they have Darlington and then it's their playoff opener. I'm not really sure. I know the trucks playoff opener is Bristol. Oh, oh yeah, I guess we do need to preview the trucks to Gateway. Well, anyway, let's start off with the Xfinity Series. They're the first race of the weekend, 6.30 p.m. Central, 7.30 Eastern on NBCSN on Friday night. Go catch that. But um, I am excited for this race. Justin Allgaier and Chase Briscoe coming off wins at Dover. I did not watch those races, but I've seen a few highlights. So congrats to those two. But, um, let's put that and go to the night race. But, um, I am really excited for this Xfinity race, um, because Xfinity always puts on a good show at Daytona. It doesn't matter whether it's the Saturday race, um, and the, it doesn't matter if it's the race before the, the day before the Daytona 500, or if it's the, um, the, you know, race before the 400 at Daytona in the summer. It doesn't matter. I love Daytona, um, and I love when the Xfinity Series goes there. They always put on a great show, and I think they will. It's really hard who to pick for all these races. Uh, trucks might be a little more predictable, but I really just don't know. You know, it, it's hard, because I don't know who to pick, because there's so many guys that I want to win. You know, I, I really want Justin Allgaier to win. He's done that, so I guess I can really check him off my list. Um... Uh, but there is one guy I want to win, Ryan Seed. I don't think he has a career win. If anybody, if he does, correct me in the comments. But I don't think he does. If he can get his first career win, lock himself into the playoffs of Daytona, that'd be huge for him. A little small team, that'd be huge for them to do. Um, I really hope they get that done. Um, I really hope they win. But, yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a pretty calm race, honestly. That sounds crazy, I know. But I think it will be a pretty calm race until, oh, maybe 20 to go. 20, I mean, it's always crazy in the spring, um, in February when they do that race. It's usually a little calmer in the summer, but I think it will be more calm this time. Uh, I'm not really sure why I think that, but I just, I just do. But I'm really excited for that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Um, but my pick, ooh, you know what? I'm going to pick a guy that hasn't had a lot of luck this year. I'm picking uh, Noah Gregson. And I do have another pick. I do have two more picks. So Noah Gregson is my first pick. He's like the guy I think 100% has a chance. 
My number two pick is going to be Justin Allgaier. I do think he has about the same chance to win as Bill Gregson, but, um, I don't know, I just think Bill Gregson and his team are going to come a little more prepared maybe for Daytona. Uh, they have a lot more notes. They did win there in February, so I do think Bill Gregson is going to be a little more on top of it. I think Justin Allgaier will as well before I share notes because Gregson and Allgaier are teammates, but my uh, Justin Allgaier is my uh, value pick, as they call it on Race Up when they do their predictions. He's my value pick. He's a guy that maybe not has the as good of a shot to win as Noah Gregson, but I think he still has a pretty good shot. And my sleeper pick is Ryan C. The guy I was talking about, I want to see him win, but also I, I think he'll come prepared to win. You know, I, I think he'll come ready and hang on a minute. Why were we on easy? I don't know why we are on easy mode right there. Um, I'm sorry about that. I changed that to hard. But uh, I think Ryan C is a sleeper pick. You know, I think he'll get the front of the pack. Usually, he is those daytime races. But uh, I think we'll get the front of the pack, and I turn Tyler and all that off. It's just fine. But as long as we're on hard mode, we should check that we are. Yes, we are. Um, I am really excited for this little race in the video game, but I'm also more excited for the NASCAR Cup Series. Which, like I said, I think Ryan C gets it done. But now, moving on to the second thing I want to talk about in this episode of Behind the Wall. Um, I want to talk about the NASCAR Cup Series Daytona. I'm so excited. It's the regular season finale. You're going to have Jimmy Johnson and William Byron fighting for playoff spots as well as Max Benedetto, Clint Boyer, all those guys below the cut line, and you don't know who can win. Now, you have to be in the top 30 in points, so if a guy like 35th in points uh, comes in and wins the race, I mean, he can't make the playoffs. But, uh, we have Ryan Feaster next to us. But, um, yeah, so three plugs in the air for the stretch. I'm just going to keep talking about it. But, oh, 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 okay, please, Joe. But, um, I'm really excited for this race because I think it's going to be very interesting to see how the playoff guys, uh, race. It, are they going to stay at the back and try to not get crashed and at the very end come up? Are they just going to run middle of the pack and kind of just chill there? Or are they going to want to be at the front of the pack all race long? You know, that's going to be, oh, crap, I can't believe it too much. Uh, I, that's going to be very interesting to watch. I'm very interested to see how that turns out. Because it's going to be interesting, you know, in the point situation. If, what if one of them gets crashed at the very beginning? What if there's a big one late? There's just so many unknowns. You know, so many unknowns going into this race. And you don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. No one knows what's going to happen. It, it's... Dude... I'm going to put this on expert. And if it doesn't get any harder... Okay, I'm going to have to get out of this and completely go back. I'm so sorry about this, guys. Because I want this to be good, and it's not. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep talking, but I'm going to have to restart this race and stuff. Um, and put it on harder difficulty. But anyway... It's going to be interesting to see what the playoff guys do. It's going to be interesting to see how they react to different situations. Um, you know, I'm, ve I'm very interested for that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just really interested... Because it, it's going to be very interesting to really see how everything works. Okay, it's going to be really interesting to see how these guys race. And I think I think the guy above the cut lane, William Byron, honestly, is probably more nervous than Jimmy Johnson because he's probably thinking, you know, I I think Jimmy Johnson is going to be a guy. So William Byron is probably going to race a little more conservatively. Jimmy, he's below the cut line. He's not going to run maybe all out, but he's going to. I turned the 8500 again. I'm sorry, guys. We'll go back 
and she was the right race. But I think Jimmy Johnson is probably going to be in more of an in attack mode. Now, Eric Jones, Tyler Reddick, Christopher Bell, Michael McDowell, Bubba Wallace, all those other guys, they are going to be full speed ahead. Bang, bang, bang. It's going to be incredible to watch. Now, my picks. My pick for the race is Bubba Wallace, but I'm going to say Bubba is my sleeper. Okay, but I think Bubba Wallace is going to win. I would like to see him win. I'd like to see him prove all the haters wrong. I'd like to see, you know, all the stuff that's going on with Bubba and with Social Justice recently. I would really like to see Bubba Wallace win at Daytona. It'd be awesome um, to see that. And I think, I think he can. I think he will. I think he's my sleeper. But, um, two guys that I think might not have the greatest shot to win, but they do have a big shot to win, and these might surprise you. Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin. Kevin Harvick has won the Daytona 500. He's won some super speedway races, but super speedway racing is not his bread and butter. Okay, and I think Harvick is going to have a chance to win simply because he's been outright dominant this year. No other driver has more playoff points, regular points, wins, stage wins, top tens, top fives, anything. No one has more of them than Kevin Harvick. Um, but it, 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 he's just not the best at super speedway racing. And Denny Hamlin, he's pretty good at super speedway racing. You know, he's won the A2500 this year. But I just don't see that team as focused this week just because they might be thinking about the playoffs, and that's where it could be dangerous for Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin. Like, they're fine if they have a bad race, but if they want momentum, they need to be thinking about, you know, they need to be thinking about that race. Because if they're not thinking about that race, okay, if they go into it and they're not focused, if they have a bad race, that's a bad momentum. You want good momentum, and that's why I just don't see them doing as well. I just don't think they'll be as focused. Uh, you know, last night, I'm recording this on Wednesday, it'll be on my channel on Thursday, hopefully. But, uh, last night on Tuesday, I saw an interview with Kevin Harvick on NASCAR Race Up done by Shannon Spade. And he seemed relaxed, which is good, but he seemed too relaxed. He seemed too relaxed for a driver going to Daytona, and I know he's not one of the guys fighting for a playoff spot, but he still seemed too relaxed. If he lets himself get all lax and relax, then he might have a bad race, hence bad momentum. And if that happens to him or Hamlin, there's no telling. They could go into Darlington and be completely off the game. I really don't think that will happen, but that's why they need to have a good race, and that's why I'm not putting them in my first round of picks. Now, some drivers who I am putting in my first round of picks, I have a lot of them. I have five or six. Eric Almarola. Came so close to winning the Daytona 500 in 2018. Should have. He won the July 4th race in 2014. Then. Yes, it was Raiden short, whatever. Two career wins, both on super speedways. He's had a chance to win in every race this year. Almarola, my first bit. Brad Kozlowski, my second. Has three wins. He's had a very quiet season. He hasn't been one of those flashy guys like Hamlin or Harvick or Truex. He has been a solid driver who I think is good at super speedways and has a shot to win. Uh, Joey Logano, always good on Super Speedways. He's always a pick to win. I think Logano definitely has a chance. Kyle Busch. Now, personally, I think he's going to go winless this year or just win one race in the playoffs. Uh, but I think he'll get to the round of eight at the very best. Maybe round 12. Who knows? He could be knocked out in the round of 16. But Kyle Busch is a guy that I think will come in with a lot of fire. He knows he hasn't won. He wants to win. And I think he could have that fire instilled in him to where he could win. Martin Truex Jr., not the best super speedway racer. I don't even think he has a super speedway win in his career. But I think he could. And I think Martin Truex Jr. is definitely a guy that can get it done. I think Martin Truex Jr. could get it done. Also, um, my second to last is William Byron, fight oh, 39 loser. He's fighting for a playoff spot, and I think being four above the cut line, sorry, 38th pick, but I think being four above the cut line is going to help him realize, hey, let's not lay back, let's go for it. You know, oh, he's starting second. Uh, but, you know, let's go for it. And I think he could be doing that. And also my last pick, he's my favorite driver. I'm a little biased, but also there's a reason that that's where he forces as well as the best of super speedways. Alex Bowman. Now, he's very good on super speedways. He finished seventh. Uh, at Talladega, 
Vega earlier in the spring. Um, he was doing all right the Daytona 500 before ultimately crashing out. He's a very good super speedway driver. Um, I think Alex Bowman could definitely have a shot as long as he has a fast car. Crap, I don't know. As long as he has a fast as long as he has a fast car. Now, if Bowman goes out there, oh, he's beating the race right now. <laughs> but if Bowman goes out there and has. Yeah. Bowman goes out there, I'm going to restart this race, guys. I'm sorry. I know, but I shouldn't, but I'm going to restart. I would just be entertaining for y'all. Anyway, uh, I think Bowman has a good shot. And I think he, as long as he has a fast car and a car that's handily decent, I think Alex Bowman can go out there and not just have a chance of the win. I think he'll be one of the guys up there in the top ten, top five of the race. Um, and those are my picks. Now, for Gateway for the Gander Trucks, I haven't watched that much Gateway footage. I've only watched one or two of the Gateway races. But I think uh, Matt Crafting gets the win. He's a crafty veteran. He knows what he's doing. I think Matt Crafting will get the win at Gateway. Uh, I, I think that that will be a fun race to watch. Um, but Gateway is it's a very interesting track to me. Uh, it's kind of a mix to me between a short track and an auto club. You know, it's a mile long, a little over a mile, I think. But I think Matt Crafting gets the win. I think Austin Hill will be in contention. I think uh, Todd Dillon might be in contention. Um, there's some other guys. Derek Krause, you know, I, I've kind of been waiting for him to break out and have a really good race. Derek Krause has been very disappointing to me this year in that number 19 truck. Um, but I think he could have a breakout race. But uh, this truck race is going to be very interesting. They're moving toward the playoffs. Oh my gosh. I'm going 206 right now, boys. I have a let off. Oh, I got into Arctic Save and Arctic. Oh boy. But I think that truck race will be very fun to watch. I think Arctic is racing too. And whoa, Cody wears around. I don't even try to cross the on. I think someone clip. I don't think that. Oh, I do have a box Good. But I think that truck in that Arctic race, if there is one, if I'm remembering right, I'm looking at racingreference.com uh, or whatever it is. Um, I believe there's an Arctic race. Also, let me just uh, talk about the Indy 500 and now talk about Dover a little bit. Um, that Indy 500, I didn't watch much of it, but what I did watch was awesome. See, I don't really like the Indy car. Like, I would watch it. I mean, I, well, I say I don't like it. I like NASCAR more than Indy car, okay? But I will watch the Indy car. My favorite driver is Colton Herta because he's number 88. And, um, but yeah, my favorite driver is Colton Herta in Indy car. Any Colton Herta fans, tell me in the comments. But it's going to be, that I like that Indy 500. I don't usually watch much of it because I'm watching Coach 600 free race and all that. But when I do watch the Indy 500, I'm always just stunned at how fast those Indy cars go. You think NASCAR goes fast? You should see IndyCar, man. They're going 240 into the corners. It's incredible to watch. But uh, congrats to Takuma Sato on his second career Indy 500 win. Um, I thought Scott Dixon, the veteran, the crafty veteran, might win it there, but Takuma Sato just... I mean, he's a pretty crafty veteran as well, but Takuma Sato outlasting him at the end, but Spencer Piggott. Oh, I'm sorry, I just shoved him a photo kill. But uh, Spencer Piggott. My prayers go out to him, dude. He hit that tire barrier at the time. It was absolutely incredible. How, oh no, Tiff, I'm sorry. It was absolutely incredible how hard he hit that tire barrier. And I'm glad they have that windshield visor thingy where he could have been killed by that tire. Good grief for getting aggressive back there. But, uh, Spencer Pickett, if you're watching this for some reason, um, my prayers are with you, man. And, uh, yeah. Also, I want to talk about Dover a little bit. I barely talked about Xfinity. But, uh, Truck Series, I didn't watch much, but I saw Zane Smith get his second win of the season. Congrats to Zane Smith. Uh, that team gets some good momentum at the right time heading into the playoffs. Oh my gosh, we're four wide. This ain't gonna work. I'm below the yellow line. But uh, Zane Smith getting, oh, I'm sorry, Jones. Zane Smith getting his second win of the season. Very, very good race to watch. Uh, so congrats to Zane Smith. I think he might be a championship contender, someone that maybe you've underlooked. 
Todd Gill and Matt Kraft and uh, Austin Hill maybe put uh, uh, Zane Smith into that championship for contention. So, Xfinity race number one, Justin Allgaier gets a win. I feel like he was long overdue for it. He was one of those guys like Kyle Busch, like Eric Hummel, like Kurt Busch, that was, hadn't locked himself into the playoffs with a win yet, but he was good on points. And, it was just a matter of time that he got a win, and he did finally get that first win of the season in 11th or 12th of his career, I'm not really sure, uh, I can't remember, but uh, getting that win, I know he's quite very happy about that, and uh, I know I was, I'm not really an all guy or fan, but I was so happy to see Justin get that win. Um, cup number one, Denny Hamlin dominates, gets the win. Not a big surprise. I thought it would be hard. I did not think Denny Hamlin would win at Dover. I did not have him as one of my picks to win Dover. But uh, he came out there and he told everybody, hey, I'm one of the best drivers in the sport. And he tied Harvey for six wins right there. Denny Hamlin just showing how good he really is, man. I feel like he's definitely been an underrated driver. He's had some tough championship losses. 2014, 2019, remember 18, he went winless. He's had some tough seasons. He's had some good seasons, but he's had some tough seasons. And uh, as much as I really don't like Denny Hamlin, I feel like Denny Hamlin probably deserves a championship more than any other guy in the field just because of how much adversity he's had to face, how much he's had to overcome to get to where he is. So congrats to Denny Hamlin on that win. And then Xfinity number two, Chase Briscoe comes in and gets the win. Not a huge surprise again. Chase Briscoe is kind of... Chase Briscoe and Austin Sindrick have been the Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin. Uh, of the NASCAR Xfinity Series, but Cindric has just been on a roll, and Briscoe hasn't been doing bad by normal standards, but by Chase Briscoe's standards, he's been terrible. He has not been winning. He's been finishing fifth and tenth, and you know, I, I think he crashed in the first over race. That's terrible by Chase Briscoe's 2020 standards. That's good by, that's great by normal NASCAR standards, but by Chase Briscoe's 2020 season standards, that's terrible. And Chase Briscoe said, "Ha." Huh, you know, I, I thought Chase Briscoe was on a decline. I kind of became a Chase Briscoe fan. But Chase Briscoe proved to everybody that, hey, you know, we are still in this hunt. It's not going to be the Austin Syndrome show. We're still here. We won five races for a reason. Getting number six. He said he wants eight so he can move up to the Cup Series. I think he'll get that. And I think it'll come down to Chase Briscoe and Austin Syndrome for that Xfinity title at Phoenix. Just like everybody thinks it'll come down to Harvick and Hamlin at Phoenix for the Cup title. But uh, congrats to Chase Briscoe, uh, sixth win of the year. I think Chase Briscoe is definitely going to be a title favorite along with Austin Cindric. But uh, that second Dover race was more entertaining. I feel like the second Dover Cup race is more entertaining. So let's talk about that. Dover Cup race number two on Sunday. I thought it was a good race. I give it a 7 of 10, 70 percent. I get the first one 60. But I thought that was a very entertaining race to watch, more entertaining, even though Harvick drove away. All the battles, talking about all the championship. William Byron, Jimmy Johnson, Max Benedetto, Clint Boyer going back and forth. Those four guys battling for the playoff spot. Eric Jones, title over to Christian Bell. Everybody, every position matters. Every point matters. Those guys going at it like they did was just incredible to watch. I'm glad we got to see that show. And I'm glad my, my favorite driver, Alex Bowman, Bowman the Showman, came out and put on an outstanding performance. I feel like he could have finished top 10 if he hadn't had that damage on Saturday. Finished 21st, you know, he had the damage early in the crash. Uh, but I, I thought he could have finished better on Saturday. But Sunday, Bowman the Showman, Bo the Man, as I like to call him, came out and uh, fared pretty well. Finishing up fifth behind his end of teammates, doing pretty darn good. I'm proud of you, Alex. Uh, so congrats to him on that good finish, because he needed one. That 88 team had just been struggling immensely over the these some months. Uh, you know, eighth at Kansas, twelfth at Daytona Road Course. And other than that, he just been kind of stuck, as I'm racing him right here, he just been kind of stuck in limbo. Finishing 20th, finishing 15th, not having speed, and they showed that they had speed at Dover. I think Bowman could be one of the guys that has a chance to win on Saturday night in Daytona. Because he's so good at Super Speedway, I, but if he has a bad car, I think he could still win just because of the skill in a race car. Skill on Super Speedway is all extremely good everybody now. Jimmy, you're holding me up, buddy. Whoa. Oh, another guy, Jimmy Johnson, I think he could win. I blow the cut line, he's not in a much better situation by any means, but I think Jimmy could be a guy that could win. I don't think many people expect him to have a chance to win, or expect him to have a chance to win at uh, Daytona this weekend. But 
could do just because of his experience. He's won the Daytona 500 twice. I'm not sure how many times it's going on that race. But I think he does have the experience in the on two or three ways and in NASCAR as a whole to go out the chance to win every race, but especially here at Daytona. So this is that episode three behind the wall. It's not over. I'm going to finish up this race. I just wanted to talk to you about that. And this is fun. Instead of just staring at me and listening to me talk about NASCAR, you can watch me play a NASCAR video game and preview or recap a race. And uh, it's fun like that. I like that. And with a random driver every week this time being above wall. Uh, so yeah. I'm in eighth position right now trying to move up. Now we can talk about the race inside the game a little bit more. Uh, oh, we got a big run right here, big run right here. Oh, leader is going away. I see Trump car for the joy up there. Um, oh, outside lane stacking up right there. Oh, free pass. Only caution was for Cody Ware spinning. I was in that, or not in it, really. I don't want there to be a crash. I turned full damage on, so that should be interesting. I might cause one, honestly. Getting pretty short. We're in fourth right now. Come on, Kyle Bush. We need to get up to looks like Wiener Mobile and Trump Car and Candyman at me. This uh, Joey Logano line is pretty cool. I went up the hill. Logano followed me. Looks like the Wiener Mobile has a little slip. Well, I'm trying to stay in Kyle Bush's draft. We're getting Logano follow me. Oh, I hit the wall. Here comes Logano. Got a block. He lost some momentum. Hello, goodness, you're riding my bumper. Oh, looks like Trump car stuck up there. There's that wiener mobile. I'm not sure. Can't tell if they're both orange and they're both boards. Corey LaJoy holds his own on my outside lane. I'm going to go up here to the high side. No, no, okay, that didn't really work. Corey LaJoy going to get past Kyle Bush. Going to go with Corey LaJoy. Again, this is behind the wall where I just talk about NASCAR and stuff and then I play a game while I do it now. Oh, here we go. Oh, boy. Good grief. This is a tight and tense racing. Newman! Let me through. Ryan Newman, hardest car to pass on the track. No kidding. They weren't lying when they said that. Can I get under him? No, all bets are off. No, I couldn't. Wasn't really trying to wreck him. I was just trying to rattle his cage right there. Did that one hard line anybody? Oh, I let Logano down inside me. Crap. Oh, good. He lost some momentum. All right. I need one of them to push me. Oh, I went. No. Oh. Oh, boy. I have stability turned off, by the way. So this could get nasty. Here comes Corey LaJoy, the trump car on the outside. Big orange, 32. Appropriate this car's painted orange. Uh, oh boy. Newman! By the way, I'm calling for the Joy Trump car because he has Trump 2020 sponsor. Oh boy. It's not going to express my opinion. Oh, there's the Oscar Mayer Mobile. Oscar Mayer Machine Wiener Mobile. Brian Newman in the lead of Daytona. Is he, oh, I hope we don't crash him like that again. Oh my gosh. Whoa, whoa, Corey LaJoy, chill out, buddy. Chill out, buddy. Go! No, I'm stuck in the middle. No, Kyle Bush. Thankfully, uh, you know, it gave me some mercy right there and got off the gas. Is that really gone? Oh, big run, big run. Oh, I'm sorry, LaJoy. Save him, buddy. He did. Here we all come. Last lap, one to go, presented by Twitter One Bank. Oh, I'm in the back of Logano. Good grief, this is exciting. I'm sorry we didn't do a crank it up. Oh well. This is going to be one fight to the finish. Oh, here we go. Two fourths in a Chevrolet. I went low. No, I lost my momentum. Oh, here comes Kyle Busch on the outside. I'm going to have to get Logano's draft. It's not at the apron. I'm being steady, steady. Stay in the draft. Stay in the draft. Oh, we're going to have a shot. We're going to have a shot. I'm going to wreck him. No, I wrecked. Oh, man. I tried to wreck him. It didn't work. Oh, my goodness. 
Well, that's gonna do it for this episode of Behind the Wall, talking about NASCAR and playing a NASCAR video game. That was fun. Woo wee! I had fun right there, boys. Hey, camera. Oh man, that was awesome. I'm sorry for all the stuff went on. I couldn't get my head straight and kept picking the wrong races and drivers with difficulties and all that. Camera. Camera. Yay, all right. That's going to do it for episode three of Behind the Wall. Hope you enjoyed talking NASCAR with me. Let me know in the comments uh, about NASCAR and about what you want to talk about regarding Daytona and Dover and Gateway and all that. I'm your Samuel Stubbs. God bless. Peace out. Bye. Subscribe. <laughs>